Um, thank you so much for attending today's webinar on um, community settings. So it is one of our troubleshooting Thursday. So we're going to go over your community settings and discuss just the community settings to begin with. It should be a short presentation. It's pretty easy to go through. And then after that is over, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I can answer any questions you have a big about big marker, and uh, about all sorts of other topics, too, if you have questions. Um, hopefully, you are having a wonderful day wherever you are at. And just to let you know, too, I am Joe from Team Big Marker, and my email is joe at bigmarker.com. So if you ever have any questions about Big Marker, feel free to shoot me an email, and I can easily help you out. All right, cool. So we're going to go over the community settings today, and basically... The easiest way to find your community settings is to go to your community page. So you're just on your community page. You can be on any of the particular little areas from bulletin to calendar to conferences, members about. And if you are the community organizer, you will see a button that lists settings. So right here I'm pointing at the settings. I'm kind of circling it. So there's your community settings button. So to access your community settings, all you do is click this. And then you are in your community settings. Um, if you ever have trouble finding a community, the easiest way to do is go to your home to look for it. Or if you click on your picture in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see your five most visited communities. So if you're only in three communities, you only see three communities here. So now we're at the community settings. Um, and your community settings are basically where you break down pretty much all of the different settings of your community. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Um, so for your first thing you're going to look at, on your left side is all of the different things that you can interact with your community settings. So those are right here. We have community profile, privacy and visibility, application and questions, members, member applications, membership dues, subscription and billing, and treasury. So the first thing is the community profile. So that goes over basically all of the major things that you might see on your about page. So we see the community name right here. That corresponds with this community name. Same with corresponding with everything that's on the About page, which I'll look at right now. Um, so we have the Overview, the About Us, as you can see, Overview About Us. We have the URL, so you can change your community's URL at any time. So if you wanted to, if you renamed your business or your nonprofit, you can come back here and change your URL and name. Then we have the Community Overview, um, which is just what people see about your community when they're joining. And when they look at the About page, it should be under 200 characters. So basically, you get almost basically a tweet, a little bit longer than tweet length to say what the group is about. Um, this is where people need to find out about Big Marker, is what I have called this community overview for our demo room. And then below that is your About This Community, where you can fill out a ton of different information about your community. So as you can see, there's just a lot more information you can put in here. Um, if you have, like, embed links and things like that to a Vimeo or YouTube, you can also put that in there, too, and it will embed inside your content. Below that, we have the community logo. Um, the file size limit of your community logo is 3 megabytes. Um, as you see, the logo publishes right in the middle. And then if you ever need to edit your cover photo, you actually do it in the cover photo area where you click this little edit cover photo button. And then you can edit the cover photo. So you can either use one of the cover photos we provide, which are right here, or upload your own. So we're using just the Chicago Nightscape um, right now. So you can see the Sears Tower. We have the Hancock Building. Um, we have a few other cool buildings in here, too. Um, this one, I think, is the Principal Tower. So there's some of the few Chicago Skyline buildings there, which is kind of fun. And if we scroll down, again, we're at the community logo, which you can add. You can also delete your logo so you don't have to have it. Then we have the community category, where you can select between the categories we have have put on here in Big Marker from Arts and Culture to even adding other ones. You can kind of see what some of the other ones so far have been, too. We have a lot of other um, categories that people have added that you can also use. And basically the idea is, you can browse through Big Marker's categories anywhere on Big Marker. So if you click this little button at the top, you can actually browse through these categories, arts, culture, etc. It makes it easier for you to find your communities on Big Marker, conferences, etc. Then we have contact information. So we have email, phone, website, social media links. Um, so we have Big Marker. 
big marker. Um, and then when you save those, they do publish to your contact us page right here. So that people do need to contact you, they can contact you from there. So I'm going to actually put in our email. Um, so that is joe at bigmarker.com. And I'll even put in our office phone, 312-869-9870. And people can contact us through our office phone as well. So next we're going to go over privacy and visibility. And basically this is the security section, the privacy section, the visibility section of your settings. So when you create a community on Big Marker, there's three privacy settings. We have public which means anybody on Big Marker can find this group. Um, it's listed on the social engines. You can join it really easily. You can find it on our little search engine internally. Um, you can see everything that's going on in the community. So even if you're not logged in, you can see all the chats and things of that sort. If it is a private community, um, the community is locked, so nobody can see what's in the community or what's going on in the community. However, you can still find it through social network, is it through social engines, I guess, search engines, sorry. Search engines, not social engines, search engines, so Google, Bing, etc. You can also find it through the big marker search as well. However, then everything is locked, so you can't see it. So it's a semi-private, it's more like a gated community. You can see that the gated community exists, you can find it on a map, but you're not allowed inside. Um, and then we have invisible. Um, so an invisible is basically it does not exist on Big Marker, and it does not exist from a search engine's point of view. So these groups, the only way that you can get into them is if you've been invited. So depending on your privacy level, these are ones you would select. Um, I'm going to leave this as an invisible community because it's our demo community. So we don't want people to join it because it's just for private testing and demoing. Then below that, we have require future members to apply for membership. So this is your application. So you're turning on applications, um, which you can do right here. We have yes or no. Um, just to let you know, if you have a private or invisible community, you automatically have um, applications turned on, um, and you cannot turn them off. Um, that is a fail-safe, just in case somebody is having trouble joining your community through your invite, they can still apply to join. We used to have it as a feature that you could turn off, but we had so many complaints about people not being able to join their communities that we left it on so that at least you, the organizer, know that, hey, Bill from down the street who's trying to join our block party um, can still join. If you're public, though, you can choose to have it off or on. Then next, we have invite to the community privileges. So this is basically who can invite people to the community, um, everyone or just organizers. Um, so I'm actually going to change this to organizers because that makes more sense to me. If you have an invisible group or a private group, sometimes it's nice that just the organizers can send invites. If it's a public group that you want to grow, then everyone can send invites. And basically, this it'll turn off this button for your members, this invite button for your members. Next one is allow members to see each other. So would you like this to be a blind community or an open community on who can see each other? So if you select no, the only thing they'll be able to see is your profile as the organizer, the, um, won't be able to see each other's profiles. Next, we have member profile and privacy. We have full name, member's first name and last initial, and then username, which you can select in your notification settings. So um, if it's a member's full name, that would just be like mine, would be Joe Yeoman. Um, the next one would be Joe Y, and then the last one would be whatever my username is. Um, probably, I don't know, I'd have to create one that would be fun, but maybe like Joe Extreme um, or Joe Team Big Marker. So that's something to note when you do the privacy. So depending on the type of group you're running, if you're running a group where it's more of a group therapy session, sometimes the username is nicer just so you can keep anonymity, etc. Below that, we have email preferences. So email preferences, only organizers post send do emails to the community. So that's slightly confusing. So basically what it means is if this is checked on, so if I check this box, the only um, messages on the bulletin uh, that are sent to everybody are the ones that I, as the organizer, post. If it is checked off, that means all of the emails from the um, membership area is checked off sent out. So if you po anybody posts the bulletin, an email is sent out. 
And then we have email reply comments to everyone. So right now it says that basically if you um, click on, if you reply to a message, only the people in that string get an email. But if you'd like it so that everyone gets an email for that, if you have a nice tight-knit group that is commenting all the time, um, you can go through and turn that on. Then we have membership permissions. So allow members to send private uh, messages on the bulletin. So the bulletin has an area where you can send private messages to each other. You can give people the right to turn on and off that. So that's kind of the privacy settings you're going to need to, I would suggest definitely exploring those so that you do know what they kind of do. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is the members area. So the members area lets you see who's actually in your group. So in this group, we have Andy Team Big Marker, Joe Team Big Marker, and Ian Connor O'Connor as well on here. Actually, I am going to remove Ian Aline, I don't know, Ian Con O'Connor from this group because she shouldn't be in here. So basically, all I need to do to do that is click this little pencil icon, and I can actually edit their status. I can edit them to an organizer or a member. I can give them a title. I can even remove member. So I've removed um, her. So now she is actually removed from the group. So she has been banished, I guess. And then now it's just Andy, Joe, and that's it. The next thing, too, in here to note is we have Andy as well, is that we have two other areas, three other areas on here, conferences, webinars, and bulletin. So if somebody's being slightly annoying um, and creating a bunch of conferences, posting to the bulletin too much, you can give that, take away their right to be able to post just by going over to their name and you can actually click these off. So currently right now, whenever you have a bigger community or whatever, all these are automatically all clicked on um, when somebody joins. So if you would like to always change that, just remember to come to the site members area maybe once a week, and then you can change them. We also have a little button that says unselect all, that unselects them all. So basically you could unselect them all and just re-put back in the ones that you would like. The next section we're going to go over is the application questions. Um, so application questions, if you do have applications, you can ask these questions and then people can fill them out. Um, the application questions and answers are only sent to you as the organizer. So we have just why would you like to join this community is our standard one. Um, but you can easily add in, you know, whatever question you, you would like. So if you were running a business, you could do, you know, I would like this person to, you know, where, how did you find out about my coaching business? Or how do you feel about taxes? Um, and then people could write in and it gives you a little bit better picture of who's actually applying. And then to see your applications, you just go to the member applications area and you can actually go through and see how they applied and or um, how they actually are interacting with this. So it's just something to note on the application is that we have it set up on BigMarker that if somebody registers for your conference, they actually apply to join your community or they do join your community if it's public. Um, so that's just something to note that Basically, we're treating it similar to, like, I guess, a Twitter feed that basically, if you are registering, um, you just automatically join so that basically you have access to all the content in the future. So that's just something to note when you're organizing your community um, and in your settings. So you might see a ton of applications that you can go through and accept or decline. If you do hit accept, just to note, um, they do get an email that says that they have been accepted into the community. And if you hit decline, they do receive an email that says they've been declined to join. So this is Adam Big Marker. We're going to decline him. And then you'll see that it says that he has been declined and by who. So it's Joe. Um, and then if you accidentally decline somebody, they can still reapply to join. If you do nothing, nothing happens. Um, so if you just like to ignore it, just don't do anything. The next section is membership dues. So one feature on Big Marker to note is you can actually charge dues to be part of your community. So basically the idea is you can charge $100 a year, $2 a month, etc., and people can pay paid to be part of your group. So they have basically your um, monetizing your content. So if you require membership dues, you can hit yes, and then you can actually add in the amount. It's a U.S. dollar amount, and then you do it every month, every six months, or annually, so you can make it so it's you know, $1,000 to be part of the group, and then every year people pay it. 
Especially so something that out there's the membership dues, you can turn them on and off. Um, next, we have subscription and billing. So if you have questions about your billing on Big Mark or the type of group you have, etc., you just go to subscription and billing, and then basically you can enter your credit card, you can upgrade your community, you can downgrade your community, um, and you can also look at what type of plan you have. And then below that, we have treasury. So if you do take any dues or chip in, you will find them in your treasury. And then that tells you how much money you have in it, how you take money out, et cetera, from your group. So it allows you to kind of look into how everything's going. And under subscription as well, if you are paying per month, you'll see your um, transcript of your payments. Um, and then when they were paid and by what credit card with the last four digits shown. So that's basically the breakdown of the community settings. Um, if you do happen to have any questions specifically about settings, feel free to ask them and I can go over them. And then two, if you have um, any questions about Big Marker in general, this is the time to ask and I can easily help you out. And then we, it looks like we do have a uh, question and I am hoping I'm saying it right. Is it um, Biana? I hope I said that correctly. If not, forgive me. Um, I am looking to create a membership site. So it's Big Marker, all I need to run a basic membership site. Yeah. So you can see on here that you do have your ability to see your members. So on Big Marker, it's just a breakdown of your community. So when we say community, that could be online group, that could be online organization, whatever you want to call it, um, membership site. It's all the same. So basically, people join your group. And on your group, you have your bulletin where you can share updates. So you share an update. We say, hello, and I can actually share an update with Andy. Um, you can add files to it as well. So you can actually upload um, files to it. So I don't have any Word documents readily handily, but here's a PDF that I can upload. So I'm going to upload this PDF, um, and then I can post it as well. So you can basically do that, and then you have the file uploaded, and people can access that file. Um, we don't have an area specifically where files are all stored in one area, but it's easy to upload them and then find them through our little search area. You can search for the files. Um, so that's just something I know you can upload files on here. Um, you can also message people individually, so if you only want to share a file with Andy, you can do it with just Andy. Then we even have, too, an area so you can see your calendar, create video conferences, etc. So the, the community area is pretty, pretty much, I mean, it's, it's it's not as fully functional as something like Ning, but it's definitely functional enough to do basic stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, so basically eight modules. So you mean like eight classes, eight courses? Is that kind of the idea? Or is each module its own specific group? Eight lessons? So yeah, so basically you create your group. So, once you log in on Big Marker, you go to, you can either do start a group down here on your home page, or I can send you this link, which I'll do right now. Um, so, there's the link. You can create your group, name it, private, public, etc. And then once you end up on your group page, you basically are, sorry, let me find a group again. You have your group, and then you can create your conferences. So these would be your lessons. You just create your new conferences. We have, you know, you would just create a new conference or host a web conference from anywhere. Lesson one. And then you would go through and do each lesson. Um, and then you can add, do the schedule in time. You can make it public or private. My biggest suggestion, since it's your lessons and things like that, is one little feature to know in here is our format. So in each conference room, we have two different formats. Um, we have a webinar format and a meeting format. So in a webinar format, um, you as the um, host have a lot more administrative rights and controls. In a meeting format, everyone has the same administrative rights and controls. So I prefer webinars because of the fact that, you know, I want to have more control over the actual webinar, conference, video conference, whatever you want to call this, video chat. So it's just something to know when you do create it. Um, a webinar is, again, probably the best. So then you can mute and unmute individuals. You can kick individuals out of the room, et cetera. 
Um, whereas in a meeting, it can become kind of chaotic if everybody wants to talk at the same time. The last thing to note, too, when you're creating your conferences um, is we have two conference rooms. Um, so the conference room we're in right now is our beta room. So you just need to select the beta room if you want to use the beta room. I would suggest the beta room um, beyond um, anything else on this um, over the standard room because the beta room is a brand new technology. It's much faster. The audio is much clearer. And also, two, um, it has screen sharing, um, YouTube sharing, file sharing as well, and all of them are recorded. Um, so you can have up to, just to let you know, too, in the beta room, you can have up to nine people on webcam with 100 attending. So that, again, is nine webcams. I just have the one, but you can do nine. The only limitation on the new room is it only works on Google Chrome right now. We're adding in more web browsers, but that's just the one limitation. But it also guarantees that you'll have a much more quality web conference because Google Chrome is pretty great. And then when everybody's sharing their webcam, they can see each other, if it's under, if it's nine and under. And then I, here, 